Hi guys, so I'm here today to do my most anticipated new releases for 2017. You're probably seeing quite a few of these videos pop up in your subscription feed, but in case you're not aware of what this video is, briefly it is just me telling you about some of the books that are coming out in 2017 that I am really excited for. Obviously this is not an exhaustive list of what's coming out in 2017 and there will probably be a lot more things throughout the year that come out that I get really excited about that either haven't been finalised because they're coming out in the second half of the year or I just haven't found out about yet and maybe they're coming out in January. Let me know if you know anything that you think I'll be excited for. But instead of wasting more time havering on at you, let's have a look at the books, shall we? I actually tried to restrain myself from saying shall we there but it just came out. So these books are in no particular order, they're not even in date order, I will put down below the month they're coming out in though. The first one will come as no surprise to you though and that is John Burnside's new novel which is called Ashland and Vine. This has been published by Jonathan Cape who are an imprint of Vintage. From what I gather this novel follows a film student who wants to make a documentary about an elderly woman's life. It's set in the year 1999. But rather than agreeing to be the subject of this documentary, the woman makes a deal with the film student that she will reveal to her small stories from her life the longer the film student stays sober. Honestly, regardless of the plot, I would be excited to read this book because of the author whose work I absolutely love and cannot wait to see their new endeavour come to life in this novel. The next novel I'm also excited about because of one of the authors and that is We Come Apart which is authored by both Sarah Crossan and Brian Conahan. I read Sarah Crossan's previous YA book written entirely in verse this year one and absolutely loved it so I was really excited to see she had something else coming out soon but like I mentioned it is a collaborative work and I believe this story is about two teenagers whose families are from very different cultural backgrounds who meet whilst serving community service. I imagine it's a romance, but I also believe there are a lot more deeper themes running throughout the novel. Now the next book is a non-fiction book published by Zed Books, and that is Romophobia, The Last Form of Acceptable Racism by Aidan McGarry. As the title suggests, this book is about the bigoted and racist attitudes towards travelling communities that are still incredibly pervasive today. At least in the mainstream media when talking about racism it still feels like often these people are ignored when in fact it's something that heavily impinges on their life and sometimes takes quite a violent form and is perpetuated by the media. I think a lot of us have very limited exposure to what the lives of um, Romani and travelling communities are like and those are very very narrow uh, cliches and this is a topic that I care about but certainly haven't read terribly much about so I'm excited to read an entire non-fiction work about it and I think it's going to be really really important. Now the next novel some of you might have already read because it is already out in the US but it's being published in the UK this year by Penguin and that is Homegoing by Yad Jassy. Because this one's already been out in the US I've heard so much buzz about it, so many booktubers whose opinions I really respect adore this book, in fact I haven't heard a bad thing about it really. And this is a really powerful historical novel that follows two sisters, one of whom is sold into slavery and the other who becomes a slave trader's wife. It then, I believe, follows the subsequent generations of each's families and the different lives they lead. So, sounds amazing and like I said, I've heard amazing reviews so far so I'm really excited to read this one in 2017. The next book is a collection of poetry and that's Plum by Holly McNish. Holly McNish is a fantastic performance poet. You've heard me talk a lot about Kate Tempest, well Holly McNish is in a similar style of poetry, although entirely uh, unique in herself and her work is incredibly individual and distinctive. She definitely appeals to a similar audience so if you like Kate Tempest you'll probably like Holly McNish and her latest collection comes out this year. I actually saw Holly McNish perform a few years ago now at a Canongate event I went to with Nicola from Robotnik and ever since then I have just thought she was absolutely spectacular and loved watching her perform her poetry as well as reading her poetry so I'll definitely be getting my hands on this collection as soon as it's out. The next book is one I've seen in other people's videos, namely Jen from Jen Campbell and I think it's going to be a really important release of 2017 and that's The Accusation by Bandy, translated by Deborah Smith. Deborah Smith is the translator who translated 
the vegetarian and human acts, the work of Han Kang that I'm sure most of you watching videos on booktube are familiar with. This is also a work written in Korea, although the author is from North Korea and most importantly is still currently residing in North Korea and wrote these pieces whilst living in North Korea. These are all stories about living under the dictatorship in North Korea and although they're all stories they're based on reality. The next book I know quite literally nothing about other than the author <laughs> But according to Goodreads, in 2017, Amy O'Toole has a new book coming out. It doesn't have a title according to Goodreads, I can't find anything more out about it, but I don't care. As soon as it is available for pre-order, I'll be buying that. Because I read Amy O'Toole's Girls Will Be Girls this year and it was one of my absolute favourite books of the year. It will stick with me forever, I'm so glad I read it. So the prospect of a new non-fiction work by this gender studies scholar is incredibly exciting. Now the next book is the new novel by Colm Tobin, who most recently people have probably been talking about because of the uh, film adaptation of their novel Brooklyn. Now I haven't read any of their other works but I've seen Brooklyn a couple of times actually and I really enjoyed it and I have been thinking about picking up the book but I think I'll be going for this one first and that is House of Names. The reason I'm so excited for this novel is because it is based on the Greek myth of Agamemnon. It follows the myth of King Agamemnon who goes off to fight in the Trojan War alongside his brother Menelaus, husband to Helen. And whilst they are away, he infamously sacrifices his own daughter and he then returns home years later to a family he has essentially betrayed. <laughs> and deal with the fallout. It's a very famous myth, um, I've le read lots of ancient versions of it and I'm so excited to read a modern rewriting of this story. I think it'll be really interesting to see what's done with it. The next book is published by Salt and that is The Clocks in This House All Tell Different Times by Zan Brooks. This book is set in the 1920s and seems to be loosely inspired by The Wizard of Oz as well as drawing on various other fairy tale tropes but turning them on their head. It follows a young orphan girl as she travels through the woods and meets some strange characters and monsters who may not be as monstrous as they seem. In fact, it may be the heroes that seem to be a little bit more monstrous than first anticipated. It sounds creepy and surreal and magical and what more could you want? But the last book I want to mention in this video is Lucky Boy by Shanti Sekaran and this story follows a pregnant refugee woman who crosses the Mexican border into California but gives birth whilst in detention I believe and has her son taken away from her. The boy is then given to another woman to raise and I believe it's about the three's relationship with one another and obviously their individual struggles. There are definitely a few other books out there that I've heard people talk about in their anticipated releases of 2017 that I've got my eye on but I'd always love to hear about more new exciting books so if you're excited about anything coming out in 2017 please do share it with me in the comments down below and if you too are intrigued by any of the books I've mentioned in this video I'd love to chat about them with you. We can get all excited together. Until next time though, happy reading everybody and I hope your new year is off to a fantastic start.